Hi friends, glad to welcome you back after a brief hiatus to another weekly edition of Kick Tip video brought to you by DataPlatformCentral.com. In this video, we are going to present before you a new feature which got released in preview stage in the recent update of Azure Data Factory. This new feature is a connector which enables you to directly connect to Google Sheets from your Azure Data Factory pipelines. Previous to this, there was no direct way to connect to a Google Sheets from your Azure Data Factory. You had to make use of a logic app flow and then call it from your Azure Data Factory so as to connect and parse the data out of a Google Sheets. Now with this direct connector, it is possible for us to connect to a sheet maintained within Google Drive by specifying the spreadsheet name, the sheet ID, etc. So let's see how we can use this new connector which got released in the latest update. Please keep in mind that currently the connector is in preview stage and obviously there are few limitations. We can expect this to be improved once the connector comes to general available stage. Also, this new feature has been introduced in both Azure Data Factory standalone product as well as to Synapse pipelines which is the Azure Data Factory component integrated inside your Synapse pipelines. So let's start looking into a quick demo on how we can configure this connector and use this to connect to a Google Sheet which is maintained inside our drive. To start off the demo, let's go to the Azure portal and let's go inside the Azure Data Factory instance that I have created. Once you go inside the Azure Data Factory Studio, which is your de facto development environment for your Azure Data Factory packages, you will be greeted to the home page of the Azure Data Factory Studio. And then you have on your left side the nav bars from which you can find out the manage tab. So click on the manage tab. This is the tab from which you generally create your linked services for various connections. So here we are going to create a new linked service which is going to connect to your Google Sheets maintained in your drive. Now if you see there are a whole lot of connectors available here which will enable you to connect to different types of systems like RDBMS systems, file systems, cloud-based systems, online services, etc. etc. Here we are concerned about Google Sheets, so we will be searching for Google. And you can immediately see the option called Google Sheets, and on the bracket it is specified that it is still in preview, indicating that the connector has just been released. Now click on continue to start an instance of this connector. Now it will automatically connect to the auto resolve integration time we can keep it as it is because it's a cloud based service we don't have to change it unless you really want to use a separate self hosted kind of runtime so you can keep it as it is and the only thing it asks for is a token so if you see if you connect to any other types of systems like for example databases it asks for credentials here in place of credential is just asking a token so what you need to connect to a google sheet is a api token so where will you get this token from so this token needs to be generated from the google environments so let's now go to the google environment and generate the token first before coming here and using the token to connect to your google drive and through that to your sheets for the sake of this demo i'm going to connect to two sheets which are maintained inside my google drive so I've connected to my Google account and went to my drive and you can see the two files here which is having some SAML data. One contains some employee registration data and the next one contains another employee details with registration data. So I'm going to connect to these sheets using my Azure Data Factory instance. For this, first I need to create a new Google Cloud project. For that purpose, you have the documentation available here. The link I will be specifying in the description as well. So you can go to the first step which is going to the Google Cloud Console. So when you click on Google Cloud Console, you'll be taken to the home page of the Google Cloud Console. And if you're doing it for the first time and if you have not logged in, it will ask you to log in. Use the same login which is associated to your Google Drive. So once I have done that, you can create projects inside that. So we are going to create a new project. So this is the project can be created from a top there is a combo box on top which will specify the different projects which are currently available inside your console 
now if you want to create a new project you can click on that and there is an option to create a new project you can give it any any meaningful name so once you name it then you can click on create so the project will be created and there are a few things that needs to be added to the project before you can generate the API key so let's wait for it now that the project is created you can click on select project so that the context will change to your G sheet access project now what you need to do inside this is that you need to go inside it and uh, you need to define the scope our scope in this case is to enable this project for Google Sheets access so we need to enable the Google Sheets API for this project for this purpose you can go to the left navbar and there is a button called view of products inside that you will get the management tab inside the management tab you can see the API and services go to API and services it will take you to the home page of API and services and there will be a button on top which will help you to enable API and services click on the button and inside this you need to specify for what API you need to enable this so in your your case the API is actually the sheets so we need to search for sheets API it will provide you with the sheets API click on the sheets API and there will be an enable button click on the enable button wait for the api to be enabled once it is enabled the button changes to manage so the api has now been enabled now you can use this project to access this api now one more thing you need to do is to generate the api key which will be used as the credentials for connecting to this project so go to credentials and you can see the create credentials button on top and there are multiple options here we'll be using an api key option so it will create an api key for you wait for the api key to be created and once the api key is visible you can copy the api key and store it somewhere you can even store it in your azure key vault and once this api key is now available you can go back to your linked service and use it for connecting to your linked service connection so you can create a new google sheets linked service and you can pass this token and click on test connection and you will see that now it is able to connect to your Google Drive. So the connection is now successful. So you can name it my G Drive to indicate the name of this linked service and click on create. So the linked service is now created. Now you can go back to the pipeline, add a new blank pipeline, and inside that you can add a data flow. And here you will initiate a new instance of the data flow. This will be same as any other package. Now here you will add a new source. This source is going to connect to the particular sheet within your Google Drive. So here for that purpose you need to select inline option and in within the inline option you have an option to connect to Google Sheets. So select the Google Sheets preview option here and it will ask you for the linked service. You can use one of the linked service that you created in my case is my G. now for the source options it will ask you for spreadsheet id the sheet name the start cell and the end cell you need to specify this at this point of time there is no direct way to enable this you need to go to the sheets and get this information and fill in the required piece of information inside your mapping data flow source connection so let's go and check these details one by one for this purpose go to the sheet open it in your browser and you can see the url of the sheet and there will be a part which comes after spreadsheets slash d and that will be the id of your spreadsheet so copy this this will be the id of your spreadsheet come back to your data flow and paste this so this will give you the spreadsheet id now for the sheet name again go back and refer what is the sheet name sheet name is sheet one so you can come back and click on edit and you can type it in yourself so it will be sheet one now for the start cell and for the end cell you need to determine the area where you are having the data so in this case it's an example so we have only very few data so you can for this sheet if you see the data starts from a2 and the data is till c10 so let's say a2 to c10 as the data so you need to come back to your package and specify a2 and c10 so all the properties have been now specify now we need to check whether the data is coming correctly for the best way to the, do that would be to start a debug instance so click on that data flow debug button on top and click on ok then prompt it it will take some time for you before the cluster comes up so wait for it until the cluster is coming up and is ready you will get the status of the cluster creation on the notifications so you can now see that the cluster is now ready
So once the cluster is ready for debug, what you can do is like you can go to projection and click on import schema. So you should see three columns based on the data that is entered into your sheet. The corresponding data types will be assumed by your Azure data fact. If you want to change it, you can modify it as well. So you can see that the schema has now been successfully imported into your package. You can see that there are three columns. And if you go to the data and if you refresh it, you can see the sample data as well based on the current sheet. So you can see that it contains three rows of data as shown by your sheet. So all you need to fill in will be the spreadsheet ID, the sheet name, the start range and the end range. Once you have done so far, the data has come to your Azure Data Factory. Now you can connect a sync to it and see how the data can be moved onto the sync system. So in this case, we are going to use a Synapse based dedicated pool table to store this data. For this purpose, let's attach a sync to this data flow. So let's click on the plus icon and attach a sync. And in that we are going to create a new data set which is going to point to our dedicated pool table. So let's go to Azure, select Azure Synapse Analytics and we are going to select a dedicated pool here. So let's click on continue. We are going to create a new linked service as well. We'll select the subscription, the server name and the database name of the pool that we have created. And once you enter your username and the password and you click on test connection, you'll be able to create a linked service to your dedicated pool table. So let's click on create. So the linked service has now been created. Now let's create a new table. So let's name the table like dbo.glc data and uh, we don't have a schema so you can set it as none and click on ok. The schema will come from the source. So we have already imported the schema. So you just need to go to the mappings and make sure that the mapping is correct. So it's auto mapping is set so it will automatically get mapped. Only thing is that you need to set it to auto create table to true so that the table gets automatically created during the pipeline execution. So get it recreate the table you can set it and if you want you can check that see the, the columns will be created as column 1 column 2 column 3 this is because the google sheets connector currently doesn't have the ability to read the header data from your file so this is one of the limitations which i believe would be solved at a later point of time so for the timing let's leave it as it is go to the data preview if you want you all can turn on the data debug and uh, refresh it to see the data once again you'll have the three rows of data which comes from your file. The cluster is ready. If you refresh it, you will be able to see three rows of data as coming from your file. And once you execute this data flow, you can see the data being transferred to your synapse. The data is now shown, so you can now go ahead and execute this. So for that purpose, you need to go to the pipeline and there is a trigger option. You can click on trigger now. It will ask you to publish it first because you have not yet published your pipeline. So you can publish the pipeline first. Before that you need to validate it. So now if you validate it, you can see that. So here it is asking like it requires a staging linked service and a staging storage path. So this is one of the requirements for the data flow when you are doing it. So if you want to set it, you can set it here. So you can point it to your uh, storage itself the default storage which is associated with your uh, synapse so the link to service to that staging location will get created and if you want you can browse and uh, add a folder so we already have the folder which is set for file system i'm just uh, pointing to the same folder for the time being now if you validate it you will not get any error and now you can go ahead and execute it using the trigger so again it will ask you to publish it you can click on the publish button it will publish the package the data flow inside that and any other linked service or any other associated objects that you have created as a part of this package once the pipeline is published you can see the messages in the notification and then you can go ahead and execute it from the trigger so now the publish is done now we can come back and trigger it and when you click on ok within some amount of time the pipeline will get executed and the data will be successfully transferred to your corresponding sim which is the synapse dedicated pool table in this case you can go to the monitoring tab and see the execution status of your package as well if you want wait for the pipeline to be complete so if you go keep on looking at the notification you can say that finally the pipeline will be succeeded once you see the succeeded message now you can come back to your synapse studio and uh, you can go to the develop option from the navbar and you can select new sql script 
and then you can simply do a select star from the table that you are trying to create from your pipeline which is GL sheet data and you need to make sure that you are connecting to the dedicated pool and now if you run this you can see the three rows of data which comes from your file directly being exported to the Synapse dedicated pool data. This indicates that the pipeline was successful in transferring the data from your Google Sheets to your Synapse dedicated pool now regarding this connector as specified there are some limitations at this point in time because it is in the preview stage so some of the limitations is like one limitation we have already seen which is the connector is unable to take the header from your file so if you see our file had well defined headers like employee id registration number name etc but when you look inside the package it is not able to take the header information correctly if you see to go to the source and see that you can see the schema information and it clearly shows the column names as column underscore one underscore two underscore three and there is nothing in the source settings which enables us to specify that the first row is a header row there is nothing no options available as of now second thing is that you have to hard code the spreadsheet ID even after being connected to your google drive using the api key there is no way by which it can go and browse through it and give the available list of sheets or even within the sheets also the sheet names are also to be manually typed in so these are like two limitations then the third limitation is that when you are going inside the source settings and if you are trying to test the connection from here in the linked service it will throw an error but the linked service indeed is successful if you see the behind this is also i believe is a limitation of this editor if you see this it gives you this error but in the actual case this connection is successful if you go inside clicking on edit and try to test the connection from here it will still work fine so these are like some of the limitations which is currently present and since this is in preview stage we know that testing is going on on the background so i hope that all these things will be fixed once this gets released in general availability mode keeping this aside i would still believe this is a very good start from the adf team in enabling this connector because I have seen many scenarios in many of our projects where the data comes from Google Sheets. Google Sheets have become almost as popular as Excel these days. There are lots of uh, people who use Google Sheets to store lots of ad hoc data. So it helps always to have a direct connectivity option from ADF to Google Sheets rather than using any other intermediate services in between like the logic apps. In that sense, this is a very good start and I hope like in the coming days we will have more uh, improvements being done in this regard so as to have a comprehensive connector available for use natively within ADF to connect to Google Sheets for data extraction. Hope this video was useful for people who want to extract data from Google Sheets and it helped you in understanding how the new released Google connector can be used. As usual, keep sending your feedback and let me know your comments on these videos. Feel free to follow my channel for any useful tips like this and make sure you subscribe so as to get notifications for all the new videos you too soon with another useful q-tip like this till then bye and have a nice day